Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark show on 105.4 RPW, PeterPostRadio.com, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every player I could be. We got a college coach in the building. Uh, we're going to talk to him today, talk about where he's coaching at, where he's uh, re- residing right now. We're going to talk his journey to get where he is. This is Coach Kevin Pointer. He's a defensive coach, defensive back coach, especially at Southwest Assemblies of God in Waxahachie, Texas. Come on in, Coach. How you doing? Hey, man. How's it going, Mark? How's it going, man? Man, doing real good. Appreciate you joining us here on the show. Now, when we get man, started, thanks for having coach, me, man. man, you know it, man. I've been waiting. This is a long time coming, man. Uh, first, before we get into talking about SACU, uh, if you don't know what SACU is, that's the short name for Southwest Assemblies of God University. Uh, it's a college in Waxhassie, Texas. They usually get a lot of talent from the Texas area, but we're going to start with Coach Pointer. Uh, tell me how you got to that, where you played ball at, uh, your journey to get to SACU. Well, man, I uh, I came out in '96. I played uh, football here in Waxahachie, Texas, and um, yeah, I, I, I played ball here in Waxahachie, Texas. I didn't get to play any college ball, or anything like that. Uh, so my journey to uh, Sagu, uh, it's it's crazy how it it, it, it all happened. Uh, I did seven on seven for Kidna when he was at, at Waxahachie. And so uh, that was like when I just really, you know, I always been a football fan, but that was like me being able to do that uh, was was like huge. And so I was working at a, a, a warehouse in uh, DeSoto. I was a receiving manager, a uh, receiving supervisor. And so one of my guys that was there, he was like, man, what's wrong? He's like, man, I really want to get into coaching. And he was like, man, you know, if, uh, if, if, if God wanted you to coach, you'd be coaching by now. And, you know, kind of like a gut blow, you know? And I was like, oh man, God. you know, I started thinking about it. But then I came home and I did start thinking about it. And I was like, I went back the next day and I was like, well, you know what? Uh, Mary didn't have Jesus till she was 50. And so he was like, whoa, he was like, okay. He said, I tell you what, man, you go, you go home and you write it down on a piece of paper and you put it in Rebecca 2-2. And then you pray on it, how your family pray on it, all that type of stuff. And man, that's exactly what happened. And uh, I seen our D line coach named uh, Jannar Johnson. He was at a conference in, uh, I think it was in Tennessee, uh, something like that. And I called him. I was like, "Say, man, I, I I'll come and volunteer for free. I just want to get into coaching and stuff like that, get my feet wet." And he was like, "Man, you know what? We need a DB coach." Uh, he was like, "Here's the head coach phone number." I text the head coach, man, and then, uh, matter of fact, my my son and his and his daughter are in the same class. At that time, it was a Valentine's Day party, and I walked in, seen him. I was like, "Hey, Coach Smith, Kevin Pointer." He was like, hey, "Okay, man, you know, been going back and forth, back and forth." I put a name with a face, man. The rest is history, man. This is my this going on my fourth. I would say my fourth season because we had uh, the 2019 season where we went on 10 then we come back with the COVID year uh, where we played three games uh, and we went 2-1 and one in those three games. What did we play? No. Matter of fact, we were supposed to play three and we only played two. We played Texas Wesleyan, beat them, and we lost to Arizona Christian and then we came and then we played um, in our spring game we won two and lost two in the spring. Won three and lost two in the spring. So it was, it's been a journey, but you know, God put me at Sagu for a, a reason. Most definitely. And that's the kind of things that we like to talk about here on, on your Mark show, the journey to get there. Now you're right. at Sagu, Southwest Assemblies of God. Tell us a little bit about the school. It's located in Waxhatchee, so that's kind of like in your backyard. Right, and that's the crazy part. Uh, the The program started in the football program started in 1998, so I was already gone. I had moved to Abilene by that time. But like, if um, if I would have known that Sagu had a football program, I probably would have tried to walk on and play there because we really didn't have that much um, for the guys that you know would so. I came out when, right after, like, Monte Reger, Brown Waters, 
those guys, you knew in elementary school that those guys were going to be huge as far as how big they were. So you knew that they were D1 guys. So us guys that wasn't that size and stuff like that, wasn't nobody telling us about, you know, JUCOs, D2s, smaller schools like that. And so now I'm get to tell the guys that's at Waxahachie High School that are not those guys, hey, if it's just about coming to play football, you can come play football right here and stay at home and not have to pay as much money and save your parents some money. Because nine times out of ten, those guys that do go off and try to chase that dream, they end up being back home within a year anyway. Most definitely. And I think that's a, a key point that people don't understand. Uh, you know, when I when I, I myself went to college a couple of times playing football, you see those guys, uh, you know, and I was one of those guys that moved to multiple schools, you know, chasing that dream uh, of trying to play at the next. And I want to keep that dream alive because, you know, yourself included, you know, you play football for a long time and senior. You're still involved with it. And that's your meat and potatoes, man. You just don't yes. want to give it up. And yes. how is how is the school, uh, Saku, uh, been that turning point? Because you get a guy, a lot of guys like that that's still trying to live that dream, didn't make it at, let's say, example, they went to Texas Tech or they went to UTSA or something. It just didn't work out. But now they got to fall back and they got a place like Saku, which I think is so important in the story to tell. Well, um, case, case in point, man, we had a kid that was at, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was at Mayor Harden Baylor but he was on their practice squad or their JV team or whatever. And he, our uh, recruiting coordinator, Coach Paramore, ended up getting him, a kid by the name of Jamal Long out of Hillsborough, Texas. Um, we have him now. He's like our leading receiver and leading in touchdowns, everything. It's, Sagu is a place where you can come, uh, if I would like to say the word, reinvent yourself you know you get a fresh start um because you know you might end up in some of the places where the you know some of the coaches might have their picks you know and you just wasn't that pick or you might get caught up in the shuffle where it's a new staff the new staff don't know you so it's like eh, he's not my guy you know and so you know we 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 got those guys man that come in that didn't get that opportunity where they were at and they end up coming here, man. And we we just love on them, man, and just show them uh, the things that we desire out of them and what we want them to do. And, man, they go out there, and, man, they end up being flowers, man. They, you know, come in like that, and then when we get through with them, man, they just blossom like flowers. Yeah. Most definitely. And, and that's great that you guys are, are doing that because you're still managing and you're still molding young men. But sometimes yes. – they fall by the wayside and they need to be picked up. And, you know, you're a coach, so you you have direct effect on somebody else's life. Again, this is Coach Kevin Porter from SACU, uh, Southwood Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie, Texas. Now, uh, how do we get in touch with you guys as far as, tell me a little bit about the admissions, you know, what do you got to do? Uh, say a guy's looking for a school to go to. Uh, tell me a little bit about SACU and some of uh, the courses that you guys offer. So we are a... Of course, with the name Southwest Assembly God University, we are a Bible-based college, so therefore you will have Bible classes. Uh, it used to have chapel five days a week, but, you know, they're starting to work with, you know, the entities of sports and um, other things. So now it's only three days a week, and so it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The campus shuts down. Everybody has to go to chapel. It's built into your schedule. So, you know, that's just one of the things that you have to do. You have a lot of Bible classes, um, but you do have other classes like, you know, if you want to be a, a communications, you want to be a teacher, things of that nature. Matter of fact, uh, our head coach, Coach Smith, got his master's there. Uh, our defensive line coach, Coach Johnson, got his master's. We have our, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, our receiver coach, Coach Paramore, got his master's, and we have Coach Krause, our tight ends coach. He's working on his master's as well. So it's not only just the students. It's the uh, coaches as well that's taking the opportunity to be involved and get uh, higher in education to further their careers also. So 
as far as to getting into ad admissions, man, we we uh, give guys like uh, uh, the link, and then we have a password where they don't have to pay the uh, waiver fee and stuff like that. They can get past that, and then man, you just go in, you just fill out all the information. Uh, me myself as a DB coach, I want you to have the highest GPA that you can, so you can get academic money. Also, we're in AIA school, so we don't have full scholarships, but that helps if your GPA is high. Uh, I really want guys to come in with a 2.8 or higher, so you can get academic money. And then we can come in on the back end and see what we can do as a football uh, entity and add to what you get academically and then help you out that way, you know. And so um, that's the standard that I hold as a DP coach. And it's really across our whole program. We want guys to come in with high GPAs. So you won't have to uh, go to any classes right before practice. Uh, because you know you have a low GPA, they have those classes where you, it's, it's going to be mandatory if you come in with a low GPA that you got to go to those classes, and it it messes you up because it makes you late for practice. So that's why we try to preach and get guys that have high GPAs, so we won't have to worry about that. Now, if you do come in, you know we know how it can get, you know, with your grades and your GPA and stuff like that. But long as you, you know, meet the requirements, stuff like that, which is two point, I think it's two point five and above, then you'll be good to go. Most definitely, and you, you hit a hit a nail on the head with the academic. Uh, you know, that's the first thing. You're student athlete first. Student yes. being the important part. And coming out of high school, you, that's very important that you get your grades. And it's good that you guys, as a coaching staff, on the same page and. So, uh, stressing that uh, to the kids because they do want to come in on board and, you know, that's part of you guys' philosophy. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we, you did mention defensive back, Coach. Let's dive into that a little bit. <laughs> uh, what's some, some of the things that you look for uh, on the recruiting trail for a defensive back coming out of high school? Well, you know, just, just like I said before, man, uh, from the start of it, man, you're a student athlete. So I want to know how you are in the classroom uh, because with me being a part-time coach, like I work and then after I get out of work, then I come to the school. But as I'm working, I don't need to get an email from your teacher saying, from your professor, saying something about an assignment you didn't turn in or anything like that because the standard is already set once you step into my room. The only thing I should get from your professor or my head coach or any coaches on our staff or at our university, great kid, good job. That's it. That's all I want to hear. That's it. That's all. So academics first, and then when we come to the football part of it, footwork. Footwork. Footwork and eyes. If you got good footwork and your eyes are disciplined, everything else, I mean, it's, 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 it's easy. It's easy. You got eye discipline and you got good feet, and man, you're a great DB. You could be slow, but those things right there, the way you move your feet and you use your hands, but then sometimes, like I was telling the kid um, at 717, uh, matter of fact, I know you're going to dive into that. I ain't mean to jump ahead, but you know, you have to know who you're going up against. Because some people you can touch, and some people you got to finesse with your feet. And just as long as you stay in front of him, make him go where you want to go. Like I tell my DBs, we are the ones that determine the depth the receiver gets. We determine that. So if I want you to go five, I'm going to let you go five. If I don't want you to go five, I'm not going to let you go five. We dictate that. Nobody else. You know, all that dancing that the line receivers do, if they didn't invite you to the dance, why are you dancing? And when I tell my guys that they just crack up, but like, I mean, seriously, if right. they didn't invite you to the dance, why are you dancing? Right. Because once you dance and you move one way, they going right up under you or they going around you. So right. just motor mirror, stay, stay in front, and then make them do what you want them to do. Well, that's definitely a key. I, I love that. If they didn't invite you to the dance, why dance? Why give them something that they, they're trying to take from you? It's simple. It's simple. It's easy. It it's sounds easy, like it. It sounds like it. 
It sounds like it, but hey, you know, you, I believe, uh, you know, some of the best athletes on the field are at the defensive back position. Uh, if you look at the past, let's just say the professional draft, uh, the NFL draft this recent, uh, man, look at all the defensive backs that came off in the first couple of rounds. The defensive back position is, has value now. And uh, I think, you know, we, I've seen coaches try to, you know, convert guys that you're not getting started. Just saying, say, hey, man, come over here and play some DB. We could use you over here. Uh, that, that's a valuable position now. And the things that you're saying, uh, footwork and eyes, you train your eyes, that discipline, they work together. It goes hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. And and something else I do, I do look at guys that have position flex, that can play corner, that can play safety. Because you just never know. Something might, something might happen during the week where somebody might lose a family member. He got to go to the funeral. Okay, if we got a guy that can go, hey, coach, we got depth, man. Hey, let's let's get him ready this week. He can go play safety or vice versa. You know, hey, coach, hey, bring him down here. I, hey, I can get him ready. You know, it's, it's only – now, it's up to them, though, because they got to watch film. Right. I can't watch more film than you watch. Right. You know, you have to watch film. Now, I am going to watch more film than you watch, but you – our meter should be about the same when it comes to watching film or mine should be a hit because I'm a coach and that's just what I do because I have to make sure that I know our opponent and you got to know him too, but I need to know him well, well. So, you know, guys that have position flex and stuff like that, they can play both. It's a plus for us. Most definitely. And film watching, you got to know your opponents. You can't go into it. Uh, you know, you won't go into an assignment without being prepared. And okay. film, film study is important. Just that you hit the nail on the head again, man. And uh, we hit it on this right now before we get out of here. Uh, last question for me, seven on seven. It's a big thing now. You you hit on it just now. Uh, you're talking to a kid about that. Uh, I believe that it's, it's turning the page as far as skill, development, and reps. Uh, from a college coach's point of view, how important uh, is seven on seven now? To me, seven on seven is very important, man. You uh, being a part of a uh, big shout out to True Exposure Championship True Exposure. Yeah, True Exposure. <laughs> yes, sir. Holler those boys, Johnny Mumford. Big shout out. Big big, big shout big, out to True Exposure. Hey, big shout out to True Exposure Championship seven v seven. Jacob, Jonathan, uh, SD. Hey, man. Hey, keep it going, but. Just being able to travel with those guys and go to different tournaments, man, you see kids that that really, truly have talent. And then once you get to talking to them and then they get to telling you stories about how their coach really don't even, like, put right. them out there like that and stuff like that, that makes me want to go run and get my backpack and give them a card. Hey, man, hit me up. Right. You know, here's my Twitter. You know, right. Because right. if there's anything that I can do for you, Hey man, I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna right. try my best to do it because I, I since I've started at Sagu, that's all I've been seeing is like situations like that. Like SD will call me, um, you know, hey man, I got this kid, man. Coach really don't too much get him out there, but hey, he's a good kid. Look at his film, blah 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 blah. Bam, I did it. Matter of fact, the kid is down or he's back at home now. He's from Florida. Kid named Cortland Mitchell plays the end, you know. So it's 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 every time, but just being out there and seeing these guys compete, how they compete in seven on seven, it's beautiful, man. Like if 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 I can have my pick, I I I offer one every weekend, you know, every weekend if I could, you know. But me being a field manager at that time, I just try to make sure I give them my Twitter, uh, and I have and some guys that hit me up and stuff, stuff like that, man. And I'm I'm just waiting, and I can tell them I need to see film. Yes, I can. I, I see how you do that. But I need to see you with a helmet and some pads on. I need to see how you take a jam. You know, if you take a jab, if somebody give you a jab step, are you going to go? Or are you just going to stay square? I need to see all that. There's a lot of stuff I need to see you in pads and not just in tights. But I can see how your footwork is in tights. And then that, that shows me a lot because I can work with the rest. I can definitely work with the rest. You know, is the feet good? Hey, man, from, from up from – Going from the feet up, hey man, I can work with the rest. I can work with well, the rest. Well, that's the big saying, you know. Uh, you know, back you know, I'm sure you heard this saying before. Everybody look good in shirts and shorts when the pads come on. That's when it matters. 
Hey, that's just the preview. Right, right. <laughs> and, and that's just the preview. And again, shout out to Jacob and Gary and uh, SD uh, and Month. You know, shout out to True Exposure Championship 77. They're definitely <laughs> putting it on and they're definitely doing it the right way. And, you know, yes, we sir. have a chance to be a part of that as well. Now, before sir. we get out of here, how can we get in touch with you? Give your Twitter out. Uh, also, uh, email and everything that can get in touch with you. Exactly. All right, man. Twitter is first. My Twitter is Coach P2827. Okay, Coach P2827. You know, at sign Coach P2827. You'll see me and my beautiful wife on there, and then it'll say Sagu defensive backs and all that type of stuff like that. Hey man, follow me. I promise I'll follow you back, and we can chop it up. My email K Pointer at S A G U dot E D U. That's K Pointer. P O I N T E R dot S A G U. I mean, excuse me, at S A G U dot E D U. Most definitely. Shout out to Coach Porter for checking in on the On Your Mark show. He's going to be around, man. We're going to come back and revisit this when the season gets ready to start. Y'all go to two days, check in, and we'll talk about some of the players on campus. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Hey, man, we got some dogs, man. Got yes, dog. sir. Definitely, we're going to check in with you during the season and come check out a couple games. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right. We're going to take a small break on the On Your Mark show. We'll be right back on 105.4 RPWP, thepulseradio.com.